Hi everyone, this is Mama Rama coming to you straight from Jersey City. Um, I wrote this article a couple of years ago about formula and, um, and I wanted to share it in a different format. So it's a written article that's on the Jersey City Times website and uh, now I'm going to read it. Now I haven't done this before so I may half read it, half talk it through, I don't know. Let's just see how it goes as I go through it. Okay, so here we go. The title of the article is, It's Time to Stop Formula Shaming. All right, here we go. <laughs> I already said that. Sometimes I feel like formula shaming is the final frontier of judgment. The same person who would be careful not to body shame or slut shame her best friend might be the first one to raise an eyebrow at her sister-in-law for not breastfeeding. Um, and that is partly because we are saturated with information about the benefits of breastfeeding and partly because it is perceived as a choice you make mainly for your baby's sake. Uh, though breastfeeding does have some major health benefits for mothers, the focus is typically on the baby. And for the mother who cannot or chooses not to breastfeed, her action can be perceived as a reflection of her mothering. And that seems to be fair game for criticism in a way that some other cultural shaming is not. All right, so... Quote, formula shaming is so pervasive, and I found out that it started during pregnancy. Every book about childbirth and raising babies talks about how crucial breastfeeding is, about it being required for the first six months. The way it's treated like a given fact is ridiculous, says Catherine, a first-time mom who made the decision not to breastfeed before she gave birth. There are no support groups for formula feeding moms, although I started one a long time ago, but I know it's not consistently available. And even hospitals have educated their staff on breastfeeding to the degree where formula feeding is often treated with a wrinkled nose of disapproval. Catherine found that her obstetrician was pleasantly supportive of her decision Yet, she noticed later that the formula samples he had given her were expired. That's how little people talk about formula as an option. Quote, We learned in class that breastfed babies are smarter than formula-fed babies, recalls Krista in a new mom support group. Her peers nod in agreement. This kind of unsubstantiated information is still being taught in prenatal classes. In fact, when I received my training uh, for teaching the topic, I could rattle off a list of health concerns that were more likely to occur if you formula fed your baby, like type 1 diabetes, childhood obesity, colds and ear infections, allergies, asthma, even leukemia. It did not occur to me, <laughs> this is kind of amazing, it did not occur to me when I was teaching these classes that by overpraising the wonders of breast milk, I was actually vilifying formula uh, to an entire group of impressionable, expectant parents. So later on, I created a presentation that addressed both topics with realistic expectations, including benefits and risks, much as one would teach about unmedicated birth and epidurals in the same class. And that's a parallel I make a lot. Okay, now I'm diverging off of my article, but that's a parallel I make a lot. Like, could you imagine taking a childbirth education class where they only talk about one thing. Like, actually, they do have classes like that. You could take a class that was just strictly about unmedicated birth. Like, let's say you were doing a home birth. You're not gonna go to a class where they're like talking about the epidural. You're not getting an epidural. And if you are getting an epidural, it's because there's some medical emergency and you need to be uh, transferred to the hospital where you're getting a C-section and then you would have one. But that's not, you know, that's like outside of the normal expectation. So yes, 
there are classes where you could have an all or nothing. But generally speaking, when you go to a childbirth education class, the instructor should be teaching you about pain coping measures, strategies, tools, massage positions, all of those things. And they also should be teaching you about epidural in a similarly delivered way, right? So that you don't get this sense that the instructor has some kind of an agenda. All right, so. All right, thankfully, the super popular author Emily Oster in her two books, uh, sorry, she has three books now, but at the time she had two books when I was writing this. So I was talking about Expecting Better and Crib Sheet. So she drills down into the prevailing evidence about newborns and shows us evidence to the contrary. This is regarding breastfeeding. Um, she's been vocal about how <coughs> the breastfeeding narrative has inherent language that can alienate and shame new mothers. Recently, she tweeted, what do you say now? She axed. Anyway, it's fine to encourage people to breastfeed, but claims like it's a special bond are one, totally not based in fact, and two, just make people feel bad. Then she nudged the American Academy of Pediatrics to think about your messaging. So I love that as a response. I mean, that is, uh, that is a hundred percent what I am always talking about when, you know, when I'm talking to other educators about the way we teach infant feeding and this like leaning so deeply into breastfeeding can be really alienating and and also can give some erroneous and punitive information. Okay, again, I'm digressing off of the article. All right, so it's hard to believe that for American women giving birth prior to the 1970s, and I would say maybe even prior to the 1980s, even though this is my article and I did say that, <laughs> breastfeeding was considered unusual, even a little disgusting, according to Wikipedia. So there is this book written by these authors. Uh, the, the book was called The One Best Way. And it was just really interesting. Like I pulled a quote here. It was something practiced breastfeeding, parenthetically. It was something practiced by the uneducated and those of lower classes. So in 50 years, the tide has changed completely as breastfeeding benefits for mother and baby have become better understood. The response to this, like many other issues with birth and parenting, has often been woefully polarized. Polarized. Our current culture's emphasis on breastfeeding has been fueled by the well-intentioned baby-friendly hospital initiative, which sounded like a great idea when it was first introduced. It was an in, uh, uh, it was an initiative that was co-sponsored by UNICEF and the World Health Organization, and it was going to be it was sort of promised as a complete paradigm shift for hospitals. So now hospitals would no longer be pushing formula. They wouldn't be taking babies away and putting them in the nursery where they were giving them formula. Um, they would be sort of all like the hospital staff would be well informed on the benefits of breastfeeding. Um, and they would get mom and baby off to a great start by initiating and supporting breastfeeding exclusively. Anyway, all of this enthusiasm can take an ugly turn when hospital personnel become too strident about their protocols. Okay, so one mom who gave birth at a very highly rated New Jersey hospital reported that her nurses said, quote, you're not planning on feeding your baby that poison, are you? When she attempted to formula feed. That she was already mourning the ability to breastfeed due to separate health issues. The comment really like, mm seared into her psyche. Another mom said, the hospital told me if I give formula, I'll ruin everything. So these are not isolated incidents. They happen more often than people would expect. When new moms are feeling vulnerable and insecure shortly after delivery, virtually anything said to them on this topic can be painful. Many hospitals, in an effort to comply with the metric that they need to attain or remain baby friendly, because baby friendly certified because there are like there there's a monetary um, uh, component to this okay anyway um they it ends up that new mothers feel just confused and often de uh, 
defeated because if their baby isn't getting enough milk from the breast, they're not being offered formula. I mean, there occasionally there's a hospital that that'll do it, or there's a nurse that will do it. Well, well, it's almost like they have to sneak you formula. That happens a lot in these baby friendly hospitals. But I personally have seen babies come home from the hospital dehydrated or with very high bilirubin levels. That's infant jaundice. And then it becomes the pediatrician's problem to figure out how to get this baby back to stable. And then they will sometimes suggest that the baby gets some formula, but they also have to be a little bit cautious of that, lest they get a, a reputation for being formula pushy. And it happens, you know, people will write things on, on Yelp reviews or whatever and just be like, this doctor's office is so pushy about formula without like really looking at the bigger picture, which is your baby is struggling. And if you don't it, it, you know, if these levels don't change or we don't address the dehydration, this baby is going back to the hospital. That's the thing. It, the, the statistics show that the Baby Friendly um, Hospital Initiative has led to more readmissions, right? So that's babies who were discharged with their parents, like on day three or two after they were born, and then they are readmitted because there's some health complication that's related to feeding. Okay, so... Let me say, um, it seemed, quote, it seemed more important to our hospital that I was breastfeeding and weirdly less concerning that my baby was not doing well, explains Lauren, a Jersey City mom. I wasn't allowed, quote, I wasn't allowed to supplement with any formula unless the hospital's the hospital pediatrician approved it. Meanwhile, my baby was clearly not getting what he needed from me. Even I could see that, she's like saying as like a brand new mom. I'm so angry about the way we were treated, specifically regarded, regarding breastfeeding, that I will not go back to that hospital for any reason, let alone give birth again there. So that's, I, again, she's not alone with that. <laughs> so that's really something that hospitals need to consider. Like, originally when Baby Friendly was a thing, I, I would have listed out hospitals on my website and said like, oh, go to these hospitals because they are, you know, following these state of the art protocols about breastfeeding and everybody's knowledgeable and you're going to get off to a great start. Um, yeah, that's kind of backfired a bit. I mean, absolutely. It's better than having the hospital staff be pushy about formula, but why can't we find a balance in the middle where it's okay to suggest formula if it is needed or the parent wants it, and it's equally okay to be knowledgeable and uh, instructive about breastfeeding and how, how to help in that regard. Okay, um, this type of militancy toward even temporary use of formula. Oh, sorry, with this kind of militancy, it's understandable that women feel conflicted or shamed by even medical personnel, which is, I mean, it's like one thing to get shamed by your sister-in-law or something, but it's pretty serious when you feel like the medical staff is judging you for saying like, help, we need some formula or we need some help in some other way because this baby will not stop crying. This just happened a couple of weeks ago to my clients birthing here in Jersey City where their baby was just shrieking and they couldn't figure out what was going on. And the pediatrician was like, instead of saying, I think you need um, formula, just said, uh, I think you need to pump and give your baby milk from your breast, but in a bottle or a syringe. Then the lactation consultant comes in ostensibly to help her pump, but she says to the new mother, no, that's not a good idea. You shouldn't be pumping because um, the pump, you know, the hospital grade pump that all the hospitals have, the Medela Symphony, doesn't, isn't really efficient at removing colostrum. Anybody who knows about breastfeeding knows that that is true. It's easier to actually hand express. Um, but they were like beyond at that point. So the uh, LC encouraged them to continue to continue breastfeeding. And then the next morning when somebody came in and checked the baby's vitals, they found that her blood sugar was very low and her weight had dropped to a, had dropped 11%. Usually they're okay with seven to 10%. 
But once it goes beyond that, then they have the justification to say, okay, now you have to use formula. So as it turned out with this couple, breastfeeding did not work for them. Um, she kind of expected that. It was interesting. She had said to me uh, in a prenatal class, breastfeeding has never worked in our family. My mother didn't have enough milk. My sister didn't have enough milk. But 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 who? We don't know. There is probably some physiological reason for why it didn't work in the whole family um, of all the women in the family. But that kind of thing was is just often kind of pushed aside, you know, like a lactation consultant in the hospital might say, well, you know, your mom might not have had the same support. And who knows what happened with your sister? There are other factors that come into play that could mean that you could breastfeed successfully. But I could just as easily say that there were factors that were working against her having a decent milk supply. Okay, so let me go on. Quote, I find it, oh wait, no, no, uh, sorry, sorry, let me, let me, <laughs> before I get to that, um, this is me talking here. I say that though I've worked with hundreds of new moms, I can count on one hand those who formula fed with defiance and pride. This is what works for me and my mental health. And if you're going to challenge that, then you have a serious problem. One mom explained to me in an online support group, condemning the judgment that she felt from her peers. Another mom expressed it this way, quote, I find it ironic that the battle cry among modern women is your body, your choice. It seems to fall completely by the wayside when it comes to breastfeeding. Suddenly what I choose to do with my body is a point of inquiry, judgment, and speculation by everyone, end quote. That is a really interesting quote to me because it is inquiry. You kind of go around and people are like, oh, are you breastfeeding? And that can be that can be considered a very personal and private question. And then if you're not, it's kind of like, oh, why not? You know, and then there's like this kind of implication often that the mother didn't try hard enough, which is really infuriating because, well, I mean, you have two situations. You have somebody who could just have like right away said, I'm not interested in breastfeeding. So yes, you're right. She didn't try hard enough, but she wasn't interested in trying. And then the other scenario is that you might have uh, implied that to somebody in your attitude or a comment, and you don't know what that mother went through. She might have peered into the abyss of guilt, despair, and sleep deprivation, and you're given her attitude that she didn't try hard enough, like as though she had never heard of a lactation consultant, like she didn't know that there were lactation cookies she could have taken, which don't really work by the way. Um, you know, I mean, there's, it is such a open field for judgment that it's, and you know, that's why I wrote this article. It's time to stop this. It's time to stop formula shaming. Okay, let me go on. Sometimes that judgment is unspoken, yet it's clearly perceived. You may feel inclined to explain yourself, even though the other person didn't necessarily say anything overtly negative. Quote, I felt a wave of guilt wash over me whenever someone assumed that I was breastfeeding and I chose to correct them. I'm mostly okay with my decision until someone implies that what I'm doing is second best or not natural, relates Brianna, a first time mom. Quote, my reasons for formula feeding should be private, but everyone feels you somehow owe them an explanation as to why you're not on the best is the breast is best bandwagon adds another mom from a Facebook support group. The pressure can come at you from all sides, family, friends, doctors, doulas, hospital staff, childbirth educators, even your partner might pressure you to continue breastfeeding when it's evident that you are overwhelmed. Quote, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was doing something that had been oversold to me something that was both more difficult and less important than all the books and websites and articles suggested. They had undervalued my time and my sanity, end quote. This is from 
author Megan O'Connell. She wrote this excellent book called, And Now We Have Everything, which, you know, it just already sounds like a little snarky and sarcastic. And that's how she felt. It's a great story, especially for New Yorkers. It's very New York. She's living in Brooklyn. She's like looking at all the other moms and stuff. And she goes through her pregnancy and has her baby and is like really kind of at every turn, she's like, this is so much harder than I expected. But I love that quote from her book because I think that illustrates the way a lot of new moms feel. Yeah, this is something that had been oversold to me and it was more difficult and maybe less important than, you know, all the books, the websites, the articles, all the, the podcasts, the social media, everybody had, um, had indicated or suggested. But then I really love that she says they had undervalued my time and my sanity. That's really meaningful. All right, let me go on. Otherwise, this is going to go on forever. Um, I'm basically saying what I just said. I felt like she summed up everything we need to address in one fell swoop. Women who struggle with the rigors of breastfeeding and the exhausting chore of around the clock pumping, let's not forget that, they can spiral into a postpartum mood disorder in no time. Breastfeeding should never be prioritized over a mother's mental health. Yet it is often difficult to explain that to someone in the throes of new motherhood. A new mom needs support both in learning how to breastfeed, but also letting go of the endeavor if it isn't working. And in order to do that, she has to feel somewhat positive about formula feeding instead of like reluctant or embarrassed or like, uh, we're formula feeding, you know, and you hear that a lot from people. I finally feel like I can enjoy my baby and my maternity leave. Before I was consumed by pumping and bleeding nipples, admits one local mom. Stopping pumping and my agonizing attempts at breastfeeding was the best decision I ever made. I can't believe I tortured myself for so long, end quote. No one wants to hear the word torture and new motherhood used in the same sentence. So. Wrapping it up, in order to relieve some of this guilt, our attitudes towards uh, mother's choices need to be adjusted. We need to have more realistic expectations around breastfeeding. That's from educators to birth workers. That would be a start. We should neither inflate the benefits, but we also shouldn't disparage formula. How about embracing all modes of feeding? There's pumping, there's formula feeding, there's combination feeding. That's what most women end up doing is combination feeding. No more sideways glances or unsolicited lectures on how superior breastfeeding is. You go into some of the moms groups on Facebook. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, militancy around breastfeeding in those groups. But okay, anyway, my last paragraph says... Perhaps not pushing any of our personal experiences or criticism towards any woman might be, who might be formula feeding after any number of experiences that you are not privy to. An exhausting mental battle, a traumatic birth, a mastectomy, a lengthy stay in the neonatal intensive care unit, a thyroid condition, a breast reduction, or simply because she wanted to without any excuse at all, you know? That one, uh, you know, gets me. But I always, I always talk about with my clients that I can remember, I, I, I can only remember like a handful of women that I talked to who were like, yeah, I don't want to do this. And they kind of came from it from different places. One who was, she didn't really give me any background or justification. And that was fine because I didn't ask for any justification. You know, if she had met with a different childbirth educator, their approach might have been like, oh, how come you don't even want to try breastfeeding? You know, it really is the ideal food for a bit. Like you could come up with that sort of retort to someone saying it to you in a prenatal class, I won't be breastfeeding. Well, that's not what I do. I, I say, okay, great. Let's talk about formula. Let's get your baby on the formula that will be perfect for you and for your household, your income, your priorities, etc. All right. Um, so there, there was 
her. She stands out in my memory. Then there was another mom who had met some, you know, just kind of like mental health issues that were already a part of the fabric of who she was before she got pregnant. And she had heard from enough people that breastfeeding was going to likely create a lot of challenges that would um, really impact her mental health and well-being. So she opted not to do it. And let me tell you something, she still had anxiety uh, and she still needed support, like outside of my postpartum doula support. She she went to a mental health facility that we have here in New York, the Motherhood Center. Um, so I can't even imagine what life would have been like had she been breastfeeding. That really wouldn't have been a good thing. And the other thing that was really good about her formula feeding was that her partner could help much, much more than he could have if she had been breastfeeding. Because... Even if it was like, oh, honey, you go to sleep for the night and I'll stay up with the baby, she still would have had to pump overnight and she still would have had to pump to um, give the her partner milk to put in the bottles to feed the baby overnight. So anyway, it's not like she was going to get out of any work. You know, it was still going to be hard work. But anyway, okay, that was another one. And then uh, one of my favorite ones was uh, this woman who... I went to her house, we got her pump set up. She was doing great with breastfeeding actually. And literally like, I'm gonna say a week went by, the baby was maybe a week old and she called me, she's like, hey, um, Jane, I, um, I, wanna, I wanna just give you my pump, my Spectra pump, I'm not gonna be using it. And I was like, oh, why, what's going on? She's like, yeah, I'm not gonna breastfeed. I just, I, it's not for me. Those were her words, it's not for me. And I felt like she had the confidence to say that uh, because she came from a family of girls and none of her sisters breastfed. So that was already interesting. Like already within her family structure, she had seen these little babies grow into healthy toddlers and kids. And like, you know, it was just in her family, it was like no big deal. Nobody sweated it. And then the other thing was that her mom was a nurse and her mom did some breastfeeding, did some formula feeding, and basically was of the mind, you know, the kids are healthy because their genetic predilection towards health and because of the environment that I created for them with uh, good nutrition and frequent pediatric visits and tending to other things in their life that can influence their health. And that was it. So because she had that kind of a background, she was just like, very cavalier about it but really I don't have a lot of examples for moms who just had no issues at all so anyway all right oh this was like a half hour long damn all right I have more to say on this topic as always but this is just my way of getting my article uh perhaps into the ears of more people who need to hear it thank you please hit that like button